Hello and welcome to Opening Bars. Judy Sill was an American singer and songwriter who remains relatively unknown to modern audiences. Although divinely and mystically talented, she was deeply troubled with numerous personal family tragedies and torments to haunt her. She died of an apparent drug overdose in 1979. The Donor is the last track on her second and last complete album, Heart Food, released in 1973, a nine-minute and twelve-second opus that includes an ambitious and intricate choral arrangement built around hymnal chants of Kyrie eleison, which translates to Lord Have Mercy. Judy was heavily influenced by the works of J.S. Bach, especially his suites, and lyrically her work drew substantially on Christian themes of rapture and redemption. In a live performance on the BBC, Judy revealed that she wanted to take a different approach to the donor and, musically, induce God to, as she put it, give us all a break. Let's take a look. We'll use the familiar treble clef for the right hand and the bass clef for the left hand. There is one notated sharp and a time signature of 4-4. Four, four. The opening for this piece actually begins solely with the left hand piano bass notes only which sparsely sounds like the outlines of an E minor chord, and then a repeated F sharp to B, which could be interpreted as tonic dominant movement. We're going to concentrate on where the right hand joins in, written out here in score notation, and we'll also disregard the vibraphone that initially doubles the piano and then soon thereafter departs from it. The left hand outlines a clear E minor tonality for the first two measures and then moves to C major. I'll play just the notes highlighted in blue right now for you to hear that. Bar 1 can then be labeled as 1 in lowercase for the minor, and C major will be 3 in uppercase letters. It can be easily seen that the right hand first two measures are identical to measures 3 and 4, except for one missing beef that I simply cannot hear. The movement is triadic in nature. A couple of first inversion chords and others in second inversion. One might be tempted to hear this as a series of harmonies starting with E minor, moving to D major, back to E minor, then to the F sharp minor flat 5 and back to E minor. But I'm going to suggest to you that we never really orally depart from the tonic E minor. And if you include the harmonic outlines with the bass, all of this movement is incidental. The whole D major chord, to me, is like an accented passing chord to get to the E minor. The F sharp minor flat 5 is fascinating too, for it too is on the beat resolving to the E minor. And that C natural has some serious musical gravity attached to it, really pulling hard down to the B natural. 
Here is a little flourish as well, with the F-sharp appoggiatura again, and an A natural with a B-flat grace note, and a passing tone in the left hand, leading the listener to C major. Then we get to hear the same right hand pattern all over again in a new tonal area that somehow makes it feel fresh with a slightly altered bass line. This is really cool. Let's look at the rhythm. The left hand provides a constant pulse of quarter notes throughout the opening until it breaks down and transitions into the Kyrie eleison section later in the piece. The right hand consists of mostly eighth notes. And quarter notes. I notice that even live, Judy plays these opening bars with little regard to performance nuance. In fact, the opening bass notes seem to sound with a rather savage thump on the piano. It's really the manipulation of the texture that holds the musical interest throughout the piece. You can see a dotted quarter note in this fragment. I would recommend playing that note and sustaining it by keeping that note depressed on the keyboard. Don't rely on pedaling to do it for you. In fact, practice without the damper pedal. Play all of the triads as smoothly and evenly as possible when you are practicing, without pedaling, to force yourself to make intelligent decisions about what fingerings to use. Now that you know the actual notes that Judy plays on the recording, let's play around with the notion of using inversions and passing chords that are different from hers, but still preserve the overall sense of the piece. One way to do that is to keep the rhythms substantially the same while altering the patterns, perhaps like this. Or like this. You might also play with the overall direction of the fragment. The original moves primarily downward. Perhaps you might consider moving upwards. You might also introduce a different passing chord. Perhaps an A minor might work. Spend some time experimenting. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today. Remember, don't just play notes. Make music. Until next time, thanks for listening.